Hey gang, welcome back to the board. So what I thought I'd do tonight is, since I haven't done it in quite a while, is run through a uh, quick in the house. I've got several new games in. In fact, I've been on a little bit of a crazy uh, swapping session. I've been swapping games with people and then also have uh, won some games through the Paid Forward group on Facebook. Uh, this is a purchase I've made recently. I've been playing this system, uh, the Flight of the Eagle, uh, I was playing the second edition, this is the third edition, and I think uh, the next round of this that I do, it's a play-by-email, uh, almost like a role-playing game, really. And uh, you, <coughs> each, each commander has a core, and in this particular version of the game, it actually puts in almost uh, to the level of having geopolitical assessments. So you've got to raise your manpower, this is the, the basic rules, I think, yeah. This is the basic system. Uh, you've got to have your manpower, recruitment, you've got uh, raising money, uh, offices, finding horses, uniforms, shoes, equipment, all this sort of stuff. So there's a you know, massive swag of, of crazy stuff to do. But the cool thing about this volume also is that it has a, a really, see, all the campaigns, so we can do 1809, uh, the campaign for France in 1814, a full peninsula uh, campaign with multiple scenarios there, which would be very interesting. Then there's the Waterloo one that I'm currently running. Uh, these rules are pretty straightforward, but it does provide you with another level of detail in this third system with logistics, le more detail around how leaders are managed, uh, and the combat system is a little more detailed as well. Uh, you know, this actually, some of the some of the combat aspects are unchanged, but there are a few more details. Basically, is what I would say. Right. So, what it does then also give you is a let's see, yeah, a, t a tactical system with the capabilities of each individual core uh, across the different periods of time, and allows you to then structure, you know, construct your armies and all that sort of good stuff. Lots of charts and tables. What would be a game without charts and tables? This is, you know what, I haven't actually opened this up. So I don't know what this is. All I know is something crazy. What is it? Ah, yes, see, this is what I was talking about, this geopolitical thing, where you've actually got provinces that you can be mapping and your movement and all that sort of good stuff with, and the, where the various forces start and uh, how they all come together, and a true fog of war. Now, playing this scale of game is going to require a very large administrative team, but nevertheless will be an absolute hoot. This is the, the module I was looking for. This is the set of rules to run the, actually resolve the battles in a more detailed and technical, more war game or minis style format. And I think that's pretty cool as well. Now, when we, uh, if we do another one of these systems or scenarios, I'll actually be letting the, the folks that are playing the game uh, battle things out. I won't be resolving all the battles myself. We'll let uh, let the individual players take care of that. Uh, these are all the command cards, and uh, so there's Napoleon, uh, and all the other chappies here all the different nationalities and the armies of the different nationalities. So it's the whole shoot and match. $110. $110. I think it's uh, worth its weight in gold. It's going to be uh, the, the, the game I'm currently running right now, uh, the after action report is kind of closing in on 30, nearly 40 pages worth of uh, content with map map diagrams, the individual orders that are going to and from the various corps from Napoleon and Wellington and Uxbridge and all that sort of stuff. Very, very interesting and entertaining to be reading the whole thing and seeing it. So I think you'll enjoy those reports. This disappointment here, the buyer came this way. This was shipped from California, so I think it came out of the GMT warehouse, so maybe I can get a replacement for the box cover. Really disappointed that that, uh, that broke. Now, I have already uh, started had started recording and had to stop, so we're going to come back to this. Trojan Ancient War series is, uh, this is the expansion module. There are four modules in this game. Um, 
from ST 145, 157, 165, and 175, for those that care. Uh, Trajan, Roman Civil Wars, and then Caesar and Gallia and Germania. Read the rules, looks really interesting. The first uh, scenario that I'm going to try at some point in the near future will be a uh, 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 Marcus Aurelius. We'll look at his escapades. Uh, these are the magazines that the magazine editions of the games, and you've got the, the counters here. And as you all probably know, the maps are uh, they're using the cartography from the ancient era. So when you're moving your various leaders and their armed forces uh, around, you're actually moving at the scale and pace that the ancients thought they. You know, how, how things were, and they're, you're working off maps as they saw them. So here's the boot of Italy, and you'll see that the shape of it is somewhat different than what you might, uh, might expect. And this is a look at one of the maps. These all link up. The, the whole point of the expansion is that you can link one, two, or three of the maps, or four of the maps, and play larger campaigns. I think this will be lots of fun. It deals with uh, logistics pretty well. It deals with supply, sorry, it deals with uh, client states and barbarians and all the different uh, tribes and races, uh, Parthians and uh, the uh, political side of things as well. I don't think it gets into as much detail on uh, perhaps the combat side nor the political side of the Roman. Uh, the, the Roman Empire, where we're not dealing with as much there as you pri as you might imagine you would be, say compared with uh, Carthage or uh, Rise of the Roman Republic. But nevertheless, it's going to be a very very interesting system. So I'm looking forward to getting stuck into that at some point. Now, last night I went and had some uh, drinks with my my history buddy, and we went through uh, his collection, and we we. We may or may not have had some whiskey and some scotch, some single malt, to uh, kind of you know brace ourselves as we had this discussion. And as we were going through things, uh, I mentioned to him while well, we're looking at these some of the games that he was looking at selling. I said, "Oh, if you're going to sell this, let me know. And if you're going to sell these guys, uh, let me know because I, I might be interested in buying them from you. And let's have a chat about that when you get back from Europe." Well, lo and behold, he has given these to me, he has gifted these to me, so I was very uh, pleased and uh, grateful. Uh, this is designed by David Fox, and I know very little about it, but I have played the multi-man, the multi-man, uh, the gamer's version of the Battle of Austerlitz, and I quite enjoyed that. And I thought this might be nice to have a comparative game here. Well, this is uh, must have uh, some replacement counters in it. Well, uh, counter up sheet, uh, update. Uh, I think I've seen I've seen these rules online. I think you know this is just about 22 pages of rules in the game. It's not not terribly uh, heavy. It deals with all the usual stuff that you would expect in terms of command system. It's got uh, facing rules, uh, combat goes through fire, bayonet, assault, charge, so we'll have to have a look at all that, and obviously morale and uh, rally procedures and things like that. So I'm not sure how popular this game was, I don't really care how popular the game was, but I am interested in, in seeing how it all scales out. Well, that's uh, four maps. I did not realize it was that big. Let's see what the scale, this must be 200 meter hexes or something like that. Let's have a quick look here and see what it is. Yep, yeah, 150 yard hexes and uh, 100 men per strength point and it does not have the time scale but I'm going to guess that somewhere between 20 minutes and half an hour probably for the time scale. Alright, so we'll check We'll check this out. Let you want to, unless you want to see the counters. No point not seeing the counters. Look, oh great, so we're going to have uh, Lots of chits to manage by the looks of it, but there's your standard fare. It actually looks very similar to the Richard Berg Napoleonics title. I don't know how it will play or compare to that. I have not played that, but I, have, I actually have read the rules for uh, Berg's 
Napoleonics. I'm not sure that I'm as excited about that system as I am is Ancients. So that's one that will go way back on the backbone, and we'll get to that at some point. That'll be probably 2017. Now, <laughs> these guys, this was, uh, this is just kind of a, a random grab bag of stuff, but there's a couple of interesting topics in here. There's a Napoleonics game, another Napoleonics battle, a battle of uh, Berezina, and I thought this looked interesting. Here's the counter art for it. Now let's have a look at the map. The map is a, one of those high gloss maps. You know, the, one of the challenges with... I mean, this turn is obviously trying to get some sort of winter feel. Uh, one of the challenges of the ATO games, they can be hit or miss. It's kind of a, a little bit like the um, a little bit like the some of the S and T magazine games. Let's see. Um, so, a quick look here for you. Anything interesting we should be reading? Obviously, set in Russia. Great artwork. Look at this. This is going to be awesome. Look at it. I wonder. I must admit, I do enjoy reading the articles in these. So I guess we'll get stuck into this at some point. Well, a couple of other articles in the magazine as well. My rules are separate by looks of it. Nope, here they are. So I'll, I'll be giving these a quick skim. This is Robert Markham, Markham Design. And Craig Grando did the, uh, the artwork. Nice job. I quite like the look of that. All right, let's put that to one side. Let's have a look at uh, bonus points to anybody who knows what Kesselschlacht means. It's very more design. I'm really interested in this particular uh, battle as well. We'll see what happens with this. Oh, look at these cool maps. Very nice. All right, we'll get stuck into that at some point. Yeah, right, here's the map for it. Ooh, that's a, that's kind of a fugly map. Very grim looking, look at that sucker. It's a, definitely trying to evoke a certain feel, isn't it? Got these mega, mega hexes overlaid on things, or regions overlaid onto it. I guess that's gonna map back to the air zones. Um, okay. Nice counter art. We'll have a look at that. That'll come out during our chronological play of World War II. We'll put that in at the right time. A uh, ooh, volume one. I didn't realize I grabbed this. I only thought I got three. I guess I got four, huh? What do we got in here? in world. <laughs> All right, well, let's have a little bit of this. Are the rules separate? That's nice. I really don't like the fact that I put the rules inside the magazine in uh, in the ATO games, i got to say. Well, these are pretty cute. Uh, pretty cute counters, and these are very thick, too. Nice, count nice counters. That looks pretty cool. <clears throat> this is clearly going to be dealing with the Control of Greece at some point, Macedonians. Yeah. What time? What time period? Yeah, 339 to 338 BC. Uh, Athens versus Thebes. No, sorry, Athens and Thebes versus Macedonians. So this will be interesting. Looks more. Battle oriented. Force marches. Oof, wish. Okay. Holy crud. What are these people doing here? Alright, 
this is interesting. I'm going to have to do a little bit of homework on this and see. Oh, here's the lost tables. It's got the classic uh, both sides take. Uh, both sides will nearly always lose something in, in the battle. That's very uh, reminiscent of uh, Carthage and other ancient games of the time. Yeah. This is an. It looks like a battle style game, but it is set across a pretty large area. So this will be a fort of the, fort of the army level. Not sure how I feel about that map. It's interesting. Guess everything's pretty clear on the on the terrain, so that's that's nice. And then the, the cities have different values uh, based on the. I guess that's going to be the supply and some of, something else there that I can't read. So this will be something to look at. I'll have to do some reading on this online to see whether or not it's worth taking the time to punch out. But I like the look of it, and we will uh, see how it plays. And nice to have uh, the first copy of that game, uh, that, this magazine as well. I've got a digital copy of this, but never played it. Never uh, had the physical copy, I should say. All right. Kaysan. Stark, bright contrast artwork. I love that. It's pretty awesome. This will be a uh, interesting game. Let's see what the artwork's like. This is clearly. I wonder if the artwork is the same as the guy who did Castle Schlag. Let's see. These thick borders for hexes. Yeah, it is Craig Brennan Brando, same art, same style. So he must have he must have got a gig making maps for ATO for some period of time there. It's kind of operational scale. All right, we'll pick things up from some point where we were, wherever we were. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we were wrapping up this guy, Kaysan. I you know, know, know very little about this particular title, but I have been interested in this conflict other than the game, the Victory Games game, Vietnam War, which is just uh, a, a tough game to solo. But i um, looking for some of the operational style and uh, smaller scale battles. So that'll be fun to have a look at. Right. I did buy this the other day, and I managed to get a pretty decent price on it. And I'm, I, I am, I know what to expect when I open this box in terms of production quality. I've seen, seen stuff before with some of their other, other games, the Death Ride series in particular, and I know that everything is done in a, uh, an 11 by 17 format. Which is a little, a little disappointing, based, you know, given how much the games cost. I think if the games were less expensive, you know, this is a handmade box, right? It's got a piece of paper glued to the top here. There's a lot of love and a lot of work that goes into these, uh, making these boxes and making the games and everything. But let's have a look at it before we judge, right? I, I, I know what I think I, I, I'm going to be getting here, but let's just see. Uh, this is a this is set on uh, Pacific Islands of Guam. Uh, I seem to be on a bit of a Pacific game acquisition kick at the moment. It's got a little checklist of all the things that need to be in here, and everything's checked off. We are in good shape, <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, purchase list. Let's see how much this thing goes for. Uh, okay, so forty. Okay, so this is forty dollars. I had got the impression this was sixty, sort of sixty plus. Um, I do know the Death Ride Kursk series are much more expensive. They're in the hundred odd dollar range. So let's pull this sucker out and have a look at it. Here's your rule, uh, rules of play, which are plain paper, printed, full color, nice font, nice and clear. Yeah, no complaints about that. I guess for the old guys we might have liked a slightly larger font, but that's all pretty good. That's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, 
special maps. Big hex numbers on these guys. And these are and these are actually surprising. I thought these were going to be uh, much thinner. So this cardstock is actually quite nice. And the artwork on these is quite nice. I you know, probably <coughs> would like slightly less obvious hex numbers, but that is okay. There's the Marines uh, logo, simplify, etc. So that you know, these are actually surprisingly nice. I am uh, pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. <coughs> These charts are pretty groovy. Got your uh, division layouts and setups, so you know what goes where. So that's the U.S. Army 77th, and then the Third Marine Division here. Uh, fire combat results table. There's lots of tracks, casualty tracks. And let's have a look at the counters. Uh, these are a matte finish, and they are a decent thickness, and they look like they pop out pretty easily. But a nice, uh, just a plain, plain texture to them. Lots of information on the counters. They're perfectly centered and uh, offset. Really nice. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I was, uh, I was ready to be a little judgmental with this particular uh, manufacturer of Grogna uh, simulations, but I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised at the production quality of the game. And by the looks of it, we're dealing with uh, Chris's design, this guy, we're dealing with about, what do we got here? Historical background, tactical mentoring. So we're looking at excluding scenarios. 13 pages of rules. I mean, that is screaming, play me now. Isn't that? Four maps. Yeah, so here, here's the only judgment if you're going to be critical about this stuff. Is wouldn't it be nice just to have two maps or one map, right? Have that be a fold out. But I understand that printing that sort of stuff, oh, okay. Playing cardboard bags. Oh, uh, crud. Well, you know, so here's one thing that I must say I really don't like about games. Having blank backs means a couple of things. Uh, you're going to have to... Uh, you're going to have to be very organized and tray these or bag these by formation type and uh, information counter type. Actually, there's not very few information counters here. I bet you these are some sort of fortification. Uh, so, otherwise, you you spend all your time getting the counters out of the out of the tray, and uh, sorry, out of the out of the the box, and then you've got to flip them all over again, and then get them organized. So you're double you're double handling everything. Oh, well, that, that's that's a little disappointing. I'm not going to let that get in the way of playing the game, though. That's just a from a convenience perspective, I, I prefer that, if, for instance, if these were colored on the back, the same color as the, as the front, so that we could m more easily organize these. So if these were brown on the back like this, this color was on the back of here, then that would, be, that would be sweet. But clearly they're just putting a sheet down over this cardboard and then running them through the die cutter. Never mind. That's all right. We can. Uh, we'll be big boys. We'll put our big boy pants on, and we'll deal with it. I don't have a problem with that. As well, I do have a problem with it, but it's not a big problem. So that was the. This is one of the. Uh, this is the most recent thing I think I've purchased. Is this guy? I didn't pay too much for it either. So. Boxes are tight. Good stuff. All right. So there's that. Now, I do have a couple of magazine bits and pieces here that I've had for a while. As you can see, Tarawa, so another Pacific uh, battle title. Um, I'm going to pack this and take it on the road with me. It's a solitaire game. Interested in that. So that'll fit into the chronological walk through World War II in the Pacific, and we will immediately. Uh, also, uh, so we'll be playing that, but at the same time, I'm going to try and get through uh, Fortress Stalingrad, which would uh, wrap us up on 
uh, the Eastern Front for 42 pretty much. I, I, I struggled with the, the Battle for Stalingrad, John Hill's title. I, I enjoyed it, just wasn't that much fun solo. Um, I was I, I was uh, a broken man after I tried getting through some of the L2 stuff for Streets of Stalingrad. I just do not have the appetite for a monster tactical game at the moment, so we're going to uh, wait on playing that until some later date. So we'll have a look at this Tarawa game. It's not very often you see a solitaire title come out on, in, uh, in the Strate uh, Strategy and Tactics magazines. So that's all I had for you. Just a, you know, I had a, a fair few things that kind of been, been backed up for a while. Oh, three, two, two more things, two more things. So, I don't know if you've read these books or not, but if you want to get uh, great characters and uh, read about the Marine Corps and uh, drink and fine, uh, not fine, uh, it's not fine whiskey at all, uh, drinking uh, famous grouse, then these are quite entertaining little books. Not a lot of actual war action in them, just lots of character development. So I have quite enjoyed that light reading. And the last one is the second book in that Korean War as well. So my buddy is loaning those to me. And here's something I picked up for 20 bucks at Costco. So if you, you are, pardon my dog drinking water in the background. If you are looking at Jesse's Looking at Jesse's uh, magnet Kickstarter, this thing was twenty dollars, I think. It's a twenty-four by thirty-six magnetic frame whiteboard, perfect size for a one-map game. Go get one of these from Costco for twenty dollars. You know, my wife told me these were twenty, so that means they're probably twenty-five. Uh, and you can play Great Battles of History on this. You can play. A whole bunch of uh, games will fit on this size. Put it up on your wall, and all of a sudden you're a rock star. All right, just thought I'd share that with you. That's all I got. We'll uh, talk to you soon.